Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gemini TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi folks, we're back with latest updated of ASEAN News. Cambodian police arrests worker protesting against layoffs at casino. A union leader says Cambodian police arrest 15 workers protesting against layoffs at the country's biggest casino run by a Hong Kong listed firm. Thousands of workers have been on strike since last month in front of Nagacorp LTD's hotel and casino complex in Phnom Penh, demanding the reinstatement of 365 employees who were let go in April last year. The chief of the workers' union, Chim Sitar, says workers had not been compensated properly. I'm protesting here to demand that the company reinstate all the fired workers, unionists, all 365 people, and the company must respect the Cambodian labor law on this which they have violated. <laughs> Protesters are pulled into a police truck and taken away. Phnom Penh police spokesman San Sok Seya couldn't be reached for a comment immediately. Despite the arrest, some 300 workers continued their protest. There was no fresh comment from the company, Naga World, about the workers' demands. Indonesian Navy brings to the shore the Rohingya ship affected by disaster on the west coast of Indonesia. Scores of Rohingya, who had been adrift on a sinking boat off the western coast of Indonesia, safely arrived on a shore, following calls from international aid organizations for Indonesian authorities to allow them to seek refuge. Over 100 refugees, including children and pregnant women, had been spotted by local fishermen on the long wooden skiff. Authorities had initially said it would provide basic aid to the vessel, but then turn it away, despite calls from the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees and Amnesty International to let the boat come to shore. Rohingya Muslims refugees from Myanmar have for years sailed to countries such as Malaysia, Thailand and Indonesia between November and April when the seas are calm. Hundreds of them came to Aceh in intervals in recent years. Eyewitness captures road submerged by flood in Sabah. An eyewitness captures a highway submerged under flood water in the eastern Malaysia state of Sabah. The flood waters are not receding and had rendered a section of the Sapinango Highway, which connects the remote communities in northeast Sabah, impassable according to the eyewitness. The National Disaster Management Agency says. Seven states in Malaysia were hit by floods and thousands of people were evacuated, taking the total affected by heavy rain. Floods are common in the eastern coast of Malaysia during the annual monsoon season between October and March, but unusually heavy rain. Some Myanmar refugees fled to India with no plans to return to Myanmar. Mahathiel says she ran a small store in Tantlang, a town in northwest Myanmar, making enough money to send her four children to school and see her eldest daughter secure a coveted government job. I don't expect to return in the near future. It may take a year or two for us to go back. I don't expect to return very soon.
Myanmar was plunged into crisis when the military ousted the civilian government of Aung San Suu Kyi on February 1, 2021, triggering protests and conflict in the countryside between anti-junta militia and the army. Mahathir says she hopes India will provide a legal pathway for her three older daughters to travel to a third country for education or employment. The Mizoram government has also opened its schools to Myanmar nationals, allowing children like Mathial's youngest child to attend classes. Village Council President Lal Ramliana says in Farquhar, a settlement of around 4,000 people residents banded together to help around 1,100 Myanmar nationals who crossed over since February last year. Vietnamese expects regional comprehensive economic partnership to help upgrade Asia's value chain. The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership is the world's largest free trade agreement as it covers nearly a third of the global population and about 30% of its global GDP. It is signed in November 2020 between the 10th ASEAN of Southeast Asian Nations member states, namely Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand and Vietnam, plus China, Japan, South Korea, Australia and New Zealand. According to the Chinese Ministry of Commerce, after the agreement became effective, more than 90% of merchandise trade between regional comprehensive economic partnership members will eventually be subjected to zero tariffs. The regional comprehensive economic partnership will bring tangible benefits to the member countries. Official data shows closer and closer trade ties was seen among regional comprehensive economic partnership member countries. Japanese people start the new year with a visit to the shrine and pray that the pandemic will end. Thousands visited the Meiji Shrine in Tokyo to welcome the new year with prayers for good luck and the end of the pandemic. The calendar New Year is the biggest holiday and Japanese families spend this time together. Many visit local shrines where people toss a coin and make a wish for good luck in New Year. Visitors to Meiji Shrine were seen wearing face masks and keeping adhering to social distancing measures. Japan is bracing for a fierce rebound in coronavirus cases due to increase in domestic travel during the holiday season. The pandemic is more contained in Japan than in other countries, but more cases of the Omicron variant of COVID-19 have recently come to light, including a suspected cluster at an Osaka nursing home. South Korean president promises six to improve relations with North Korea in last month in office. South Korean President Moon Jae-in vowed to use his last months in office to press for a diplomatic breakthrough with North Korea despite public silence from Pyongyang over his attempts for a declaration of peace between the two sides. The government will pursue normalization of inter-Korean relations and an irreversible path to peace until the end. In his own address on New Year's Eve, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un made no mention of Moon calls for a declaration officially ending the 1950-1953 Korean War or of a stalled denuclearization talks with the United States. Moon held multiple summits with Kim, including once in Pyongyang, during a flurry of negotiations in 2018 and 2019, before talks stalled amid disagreement over international demands that the North Korea surrender its arsenal of nuclear weapons and Pyongyang's call for Washington and Seoul to ease sanctions and drop other hostile policies. Thailand welcomes New Year with fireworks display amid COVID-19 restrictions.
talent welcome New Year with fireworks display over Chao Phraya River in Bangkok under heavy COVID-19 restrictions. The fireworks show spanned 1.4 kilometers across the river bend in front of iconic property development Econ Siam, one of few places in Thailand to host end-of-the-year celebrations after government-sponsored New Year activities were cancelled due to the spread of Omicron variant. He adds that he feels safe because everyone joining the event was required to be double vaccinated and with a negative antigen test. Thailand has reported a total of 2.2 million confirmed infections and 21,698 deaths. About 62% of an estimated 72 million people living in the country have received two doses of vaccinations. And that's for today. Stay safe. Stay healthy and enjoy your weekend with your loved ones. We will see you again.